the problem statement is the solid shaft is fixed to the support at C and subject to the torsional loading shown. Determine the shear stresses at point A and B. So here we have this rod here and we have a uh, torque being applied close to the center here, 10 kilonewtons per meter. And at the very end, we have another torque being applied for kilonewton per meter. As you can tell, they're at opposite directions. Now we're supposed to calculate the shear stresses at point A which is 50 millimeters from the center of the rod and point B, which is right at the surface or 75 millimeters from the center of this rod because the radius is 75 millimeters. So here is our sh maximum shear stress formula, which is torque times the radius divided by the polar moment of inertia. So first things first, we could go ahead and solve for the polar moment of inertia. And usually you could always find the equations for these in the back of the book in a table. And you could just have the formulas there. So our polar moment of inertia is equal to pi radius to the fourth power divided by two, which gives us this small number, which the unit is meter to the fourth power. And keep in mind, I converted the millimeters into, into meters to keep it consistent and to simplify once we're solving for the shear stress. So first, let's go ahead and do the solve the shear stress for point A. So here, what exactly is the torque that is that point A is experiencing. So you, we, we see that the nearest torque being applied to the shaft here is 10 kilonewton meters, but there's another one towards the end, four kilonewton meter. Now, what torque would, it, would point A be experiencing? Well, let's just imagine first going one by one. If you have 10 kilonewtons of newton meter torque applied here, then that's going to rotate this por this portion of the shaft that direction however it's being um, negated or there's a torque going opposite direction of four kilonewton meter so initially it's going to twist him is going to twist due to that torque however it's going to cancel a portion of it out due to the four kilonewton meter at the end so it's essentially 10 kilonewton meter take away the four kilonewton meter which gives us a total torque of six kilonewton meter that point a would experience point a within this section of shaft right and the radius here we see is 50 millimeters, so we convert it into meters, 0 0.05 meters here, divided by the polar moment of inertia, which is this number here. And it gives us 6,036 kilonewtons per meter squared, or kilopascals. That's the shear stress at point A. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention, this isn't the maximum stress that this rod experiences. This is at point A. Because remember, the maximum shear stress that I would experience would be at the surface. In this case, would in fact be point B, which we're going to solve right now. So what is the shear stress at point B? So we know the radius here is 75 millimeters, so essentially right at the surface. So we know this is going to be the maximum stress that this rod is going to experience due to that reason. Now, what exactly is the torque? Now, point B might be a little bit tricky to solve. You could always look at what exactly would be your um, reactive torque, your torque that cancels, that would put this shaft in equilibrium, right? The 10 kilonewtons going clockwise, 4 kilonewtons going counterclockwise, what would be this reaction torque at the fixed end such that it's in static equilibrium here? And then for point A, right, we essentially just analyze the shaft from the fixed end all the way to this point. So we would only have that reaction torque and it would be the summation of the torques, which gives a six kilonewton meter. That's another way of looking at it. Now for point B, you could do exact same thing. You could cut it at this section and you could either analyze the shaft looking at it from this perspective, the fixed end towards the 10 kilonewtons, or you can analyze only the portion with the four kilonewtons here. 
that it's going to be experiencing, right? From the 10 kilonewtons to here, it's only going to be experiencing the 4 kilonewtons. Just like we did in statics, looking at the internal forces, you could always analyze an object from one side or the other and still get the equivalent result. In this case, you can analyze it from point B going to the 4 kilonewtons to, towards the right to make it simpler. In this case, the torque that causes the shear stress at point B would be the 4 kilonewton meter, right? Times the radius 0 0.075 meters divided by that polar moment of inertia, which gives us 6,036 kilopascals of shear stress. So as you can see, they're both equivalent. However, they experience the different torques, but due to the distance from the center of the shaft, the shear stresses basically were the same, right? Um, one of them experienced less torque. However, it, since it was at the surface, it's going to experience higher shear stress. For that reason, that's why they're the same, even though the torques are different values. So this is how you saw for the shear stress within a rod when a rod is experiencing torsion or a torque such that it wants to twist the rod itself. Now the only thing that could be a little bit more challenging here is to actually find such as this, you're dealing with a system with multiple torques being applied. So the question is what torque do you use for the equation to solve for the, for the shear stress here? Well, you go back to how you did in static solving for the internal forces. Um, you could always cut up a, of the object itself and either analyze it on the left hand side or the right hand side and you will get the exact same result.